specifically though is this mid lane matchup. This one is a bit more tricky, this one you don't really know how it's gonna shape up. Bruce is likely to play something like Lucian and Akshan, you know, Coyote is gonna play things like Javan or Fizz. You don't know what these guys are gonna pull out and that's the that's the big question mark here. Oh my god, Omo, this is it. Demon is back, he's back Demon! in the play. <laughs> That is the secondary carry, and I think this might yeah. bump up the prior for Kai'Sa, right? If you see Demon awesome. on, it's Kai'Sa, Cocky, stuff like that is probably gonna rise in prior. So I think Divine Esports is, is, wants to be flexible. Probably just get rid of like a strong like third ban. I love to see them ban something like the Rengar, the Kha'Zix, just remove that as an option. If not, Renekton is fine if you don't want to first pick it as well. So this means that Ziggs might be less of a prio here for Flash Wolves. They might still want to run it as a flex and put Demon on it, but that's typically a lock-in champion. Now, Demon, uh, Ziggs is up. We'll have to see if Divine want to prio it or if they just want something else. Quite surprised that Divine, they banned with that Renekton themselves. It's looking like we're likely going to see a Varus Ziggs trade, I think. Possibly. Is... I, 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 yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think like, like, you know, in the mid lane, is it possible that we're going to see some assassins down there from Coyote and Bruce? What do you guys think? Oh. Yeah, assassins are very possible as well, but look at this. Olaf first pick coming in. I think that decision is that, you know what? The power picks left available, we have answers for. Olaf will run down Zix, will run down Varus. So if you guys snatch either of those, we're happy with playing an Olaf run at you comp. But Flash Wolves with an answer of in Lulu already? I think the idea is that you have to remove some of the empowers from the Olaf. But to be honest, like, Nami is still available, yeah. Sona is still available. It's not like the biggest loss. So, like, Pulling Lulu early. We have seen a little oh. bit of this in the WCK where it's like Triforce Lulu top or something like that. And it does do decently in some Bruiser matchups, but I could see this working if this was a prior for the Corky and plus one eight. Right. Right. Okay. They can do this because it's a flex pick for them, right? Don't forget that Bruce used to be a marksman player back in the day. So he's more than capable, he's more than happy of pulling out these marksmen. Lucian, Akshan, and now Cocky. I think this is a very viable flex mm -hmm. here. I was honestly very unimpressed with the Cocky coming in from Lock King, but with Demon back in the lineup, I feel like we might see something a bit more impressive of him. I want to point out very quickly, look at the player camps, look at Bruce. Looking like a Sith Lord there in the mid lane with the hoodie on and the mask and everything. <laughs> That's exactly the kind of performance we're trying to pull out today. He's gonna try to do the false lightning down on Coyote. Yeah, he's yeah. doing he's, he's he's embodying it already. He is, yes. Like, you know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the other Darius is interesting though. If I have pretty good yeah. combo and they have a pretty good side plate, so Flash was really have to be careful about this. I think they need to draft something so, stronger than Brandon, pressure you know what they're the saying? Darius. We can't let you Sarah get Darius, guys. Guys, we can't, it's too OP, <laughs> we have to snatch it. There's only one champ he can still play. We have to get rid of him now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Akali. He, he could play the Javan. He could play the Javan and they can still yeah, play the Akali. I don't see Akali going to Baron lane. I know Yasara has played it a couple of times before, but I don't quite like it in the Baron lane. I think it won't have much, as much impact. I think the matchup is pretty good against the Darius here. And I do like the flexes we see coming in from Divine as well. Throwing down the Gauntlet Coyote saying, I too am more than capable of playing this Yet. And it looks like it will be Akali in the Baron lane up against Darius. This should be a pretty good matchup to negate the Darius, but it's just gonna be a scaling farming matchup up there. Yeah, and um, one a little slower and see if they can weather the early game where uh, Divine will have a lot of those early game threats. Yeah, Flash Wolves do have a little bit more scaling built into their composition between the the Corky and the Kaiser, both of which want to take a little bit of time to get online. I give them a little bit more credence, though, for two reasons. First of all, Flash Wolves always play to the late game. They always want to yeah. outlast their opponents, and they're pretty darn good at stalling games out, making them take 15, 20 minutes. Uh, second of all, as engagement happens down the bottom, uh, this Kai'Sa does a little bit more during the early game than I think people give her credit for. So I, I expect Demon to be able to start snowballing early if she gets uh, some visits, if, if the Kaiser gets some visits from Cookie on that Jarvan. Uh, so keep an eye on that interaction, see where Cookie puts the early gold out of the Flash Wolves jungle. And if it's down bottom, I think they have a serious threat during the mid game. I think it's an interesting point you bring up about that bot lane in particular, because this is the welcomed introduction here for Demon. Uh, it has been the locking show. Yeah. He has been spamming that uh, Ziggs in combination with Easton on the Gragas, banned away this time. So will this be the new look for Flash Wolves coming into the group stage? We saw it become really the Bruce show, more so than anything in play-ins. Um, but they can't afford to be that one-dimensional getting into this, uh, into this group. Yeah, locking was playing down here and not having the greatest time. Uh, struggling, as you said, on many of... It, like, kind of just an AP jail. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see not only the Demon Unleashed, Unchained, but also Flash Wolves putting an AD carry down bottom. 
Uh, though I think it is going to make this matchup very interesting. There are, there are a couple of things to unpack. First of all, uh, for like item stuff, Flash Wolves are very high on AD, on uh, attack damage, so there's going to be a very easy armor build for Divine. The only AP, the only ability power on the Flash Wolves is actually from Ysera, who's been somewhat chronically underperforming throughout the group stage. So if you think, oh, we can shut down Ysera, then it's very easy, it's very cost-effective for Divine to just build full armor items and get out of hand. Good trade there into Tarnex. Is worth noting, as you say, he played nine games of the Renekton. 8-1 was his win-loss record on that champion. Phenomenal with it. Uh, that was the storyline, though. When the Renekton was denied, what did it mean? Well, four games of Nadarius and four losses is your answer. So uh, look at to see what he can do here. And another uh, demanding champion that does need to get the ball rolling nice and early. Not going to be the easiest of lanes going into Nadarius, but certainly uh, winning out at the moment. And this is actually the Flash Wars here uh, with a small gold lead to talk about. Finding themselves that pressure, that harass, able to try and get those minions uh, nice and secure. I'm sure we're going to see all the carnage really come to a fold. All the tension explodes Ooh. when that first objective spawns. Very close in the mid lane. Very close. And, and so here's one of the more interesting things about Divine coming into this first objective. Divine are normally very team fight focused and they're good at engineering them on the map. But Flash Wolves don't want a team fight early here. So whether or not Divine are able to force early action will pretty much determine this game, will pretty much determine this early game, especially as Flash Wolves are going to win these lazy map states, these slow crawling map states, just off the power of their lanes. So Divine want to break this. They want to go for the team fights that they have advantages in with their composition. And that's going to be in 22 seconds with this Cloud Drake down bottom, with this Rift Herald up top. They want to figure out which one Flash Wolves are going to and match them across the map. Bring the early power of the Lucian to bear in this team fight. Use the Galio to tie up those double AD carries. I think it would be a pretty solid and easy win for them. Yeah, abuse the early game state and uh, obviously put yourself in a position of power with, uh, you know, Anywhere from a 5 to 10k gold lead to talk about the set of scaling. It's out of the equation. Double AD carry, a little bit too greedy. Maybe even as far as saying a little bit disrespectful into us. We're not going to allow you to play to that kind of tempo that got you to the group stages in the very first place. Now, we're seeing a lot of attention towards the mid lane so far. We're going to try and uh, first find priority, but then decide what is more appealing. Is it Drake? Is it Herald? But it looks like Len so far is playing towards the Herald instead. This is, this is exactly what I was talking about. Divine don't just want an objective here. They want to fight Flash Wolves for an objective. So that entire, like, dance we just saw on the mid lane was them trying to see if Flash Wolves are going to make a move, trying to see if they could match that on the map. Is Hera trying for a steal of the Rift Herald? Maybe in trouble. Yeah, might be in trouble, as you say. He's going to get three men collapsed upon a little bit greedy when the rest of his team are down bot side, <laughs> picking up their Drake. He's just going to die. The Ignite comes out. The barrier won't save him. And the flash what won't even this? be used. But nice trade there from Bruce bot side. Cross map plays and it works one for one. Wow. Okay, so Flash Wolves played this incredibly well. Because by the same token, by the other side of the same coin, they don't want to fight for an early objective. They want to take whichever objective Divine Esports don't go to. So they wait for Divine to commit to the Rift Herald. They say, that's fine by us. We're going to take uh, the Drake down bottom. And not only do they get a Drake, they match the other trading. They trade kill for kill. Yes, Sarah goes down. They get an arguably more important kill down bottom. And they trade turret for turret. Top lane goes over to Divine. All that gold going into the Darius Tarn X. Well, all the gold Flash Wolves just got went into their carries as well. Passing that first turret gold between Bruce and Demon, the two players, they want to amp up through this early game. Yeah, and you can see that right now uh, represented on that scoreboard. They do have that small lead to talk about and get excited for because whilst we now have an incredibly evil uh, state from a team base, uh, I suppose you're upset if you're Divine feeling the fact that that trade went as even as it did. You've got a Ziggs with a Herald. Satchel Charge could have secondly been uh, that second charge afterwards and could have been a trade that worked far more in your favor, but that wasn't possible. Lane states weren't desirable and uh, Hope One wasn't in a position to operate in that fashion. So if you flash Wolves right now as a fan, as a player, you're, uh, you're cruising. Yeah, this has been a really well played early game by Flash Wolves because of exactly what you just set up. They're slowing down the game state. They're achieving their goals. 
Bruce, no. Basing, I think. Ooh, good uh, back wow. away. The taunt goes out. Doesn't really matter because by that point, the distance to close is far too great. The Mega Inferno Terrible Bomb applied. getting dropped. And to try and target them, I mean, it looks like they're really trying to overforce their hand to go for a dive. Yeah, Flash Wolves don't have a hard answer on the map, but it's very hard for Divine to dive here. If Bruce stays around, he may be in trouble. He's in buying time, scanning out, dropping some vision. Watch to see what the rest of the team do. Cookie is on the height right now. Len is still waiting just outside of vision. Cookie has no idea. Out goes the axe. Now they're going to have a bit of a biff. 1v1. Cataclysm locks him in place. Here comes Demon. Demon. Forced to flash away back inside the river towards this team. Look, I think Flash will take that every day of the week. They've burned Demon. out that, but hang on a minute. Demon's gone for the weirdest path, and the gunning goes on through. The taunt, he's flashed away, receives the Wild Grove. And now Quay's in a fair bit of trouble, but no kills still are found. That was, that was a Flash killer instinct. And the killer instinct took him to exactly the same position as the Flash would have been. A little bit weird, but he survives the experience as a result of the shielding on killer instinct. What's even weirder is that Rift Herald use. Divine Esports are trying to benefit from the skirmish inside the jungle, but they didn't get enough done. So they kind of just completely, yeah, completely waste the Rift Herald. Kind of the first major mistake out of Divine Esports, I would say. They played very well around the skirmish, trying to force an advantage. Flash Wolves didn't give them a mistake. At that point, you withdraw, you count your blessings, you've got some extra wards in, and you start looking for opportunities to spend the Rift Herald proactively on the map. And I think just because they were running out of time, they threw it down in mid and got really nothing for it, which is going to give Flash Wolves the early game uh, an absolutely devastating result if you're Divine Esports, because Flash Wolves can now fight 50-50. They can fight on fair terms for these objectives. And guess what objective's coming up? It's an Infernal Drake, the most important Drake. Certainly is when you have a composition built to do damage. Get a little uh, bit of extra flat damage added into the equation, and you're accelerating that early game, making that mid-game as stable as it can be. Flash Wolves living in Wonderland so far. Very happy with how this one's played at the classic age-old argument. If you're drafting scaling, not to fall too far behind. And they are playing to their heart's content, knowing what is their win condition. And that is why, straight away, no fuss about it. Onto this Drake. Now the Cataclysm comes on through. Cookie jumping around. Looking to try and zone members off. Guarantee that smite. Can they get it stolen? No, it's not going to be the case. Two dragons for the Flash Wolves so far. The fight ensues. There goes the Heroic Entrance. Dropping on down and knocking members up. But Cookie flashes away. And he's buying time. But it's a very Ooh. aggressive, perfect execution. It comes on through. They find a kill. But he'll trade his life for that one. As Quay is blinking, he's very low. So is Tarnex, but now the double duo of the pain and punishment that Demon. Lucian and Ziggs can provide is putting in a whole bunch of work so far. There's the double kill, going to fall on down. Hope Bun jumps on through with a satchel charge, gets the kill trader back, and now the tension is fully released. Flash Wolves, you win the late game, and yet they, they force this very strange fight, disconnected twice, Ysara goes in maybe 1v4, throws away his life, followed immediately by Demon staying, fighting into a bush, 1v4. You, if, if they're in a bush, you can't access that team. You're not going to win as an AD carry trade. Even if you have warts in the bush, you can't see the other side. Just an absolute disaster, I would say, for, for Demon. He, he really overstays and now Ysera is going to follow up a mistake with another mistake. Yeah, he's got no summoners right here. Perfect execution will be only a matter of mere seconds away, but it's not going to be required. The damage threat Very of the Galleon well Olaf in tandem. Not enough to scare off the Akali this time around. Okay, we've talked a lot about Flash Wolves with that team fight. It's now time to talk about Divine because they're cruising to a mid game that honestly isn't that bad. Were they versus any other composition? I would say it's their win condition, it's their win state. Because you're coming into an online Galio. You can see he's building Dead Man's Plate. No fear in the world because there's no uh, uh, AP to speak of against him. I'm going to force this turret. Okay, it's easy. Uh, they also have. This coming online, the Rabadons is about to be completed for Hope One on this Ziggs. He's already got Ludens. So he's going to do a ton of damage at the start oh. of team fights. Okay, Triple Cataclysm locking a few members in place, really looking to try and prevent them forcing their hand and going for this turret. It's only going to delay the inevitable, and it didn't really do much in the end because all three plates are achieved. That is the second turret of the game going in the way here for Divine Esports. Now top and bot are exposed for them to rotate around. Uh, and you also have the crit build complete here for Lucian uh, on Kyosi. So he's, and he's about to build, uh, I believe, IE, which will be the completion. That's the third item. 
Uh, and once he's got that, once he's got those three items, Essence Reaver, Charge Blade, and IE, he's just terrifying in this mid game. He's, that's going to be about the peak of Lucian damage this game, but it's going to mean that every auto attack he deals is doing about as much as Bruce is doing on his bombs. And for that brief period of time, Divine are going to be able to out team fight Flash Wolves. That didn't used to be true because prior to throwing that team fight in the mid lane, I would have said that Demon and Bruce were going to be online at about the same time and they would have matched the plays. But I'm not sure that's true anymore. You can see Rabadon's completed here on Ziggs before third items complete for Bruce. And that's going to be such a major power swing that you got to be worried if you're Flash Wolves and you're fighting for this next Mountain Drake or skirmishing what have you around this Baron. Timing is obviously ever so important. Is worth noting that also Eason in a double marksman composition is running the Ardent Sense so they can look to try and cheat that tempo. Just a fraction. Nice little item buff to uh, ease the discrepancies between these two. But yeah, yeah, rightly as you say, right? The fact that Hope One is as strong as he is so far, if they get a bit of time to focus uh, and poke out these members. I mean, Flash was just uh, straight away zoned. Yeah, as we come into this team fight. Uh oh. Uh oh, indeed. And, All right, he's uh, fine. Not going to be much. As we come into this team fight, keep your eyes on Bruce and Demon for Flash Wolves. They want to stay alive and just free fire as much as possible. Then Hope One and Coyote, same story over on Divine. Those are the four players that need to be protected by their respective teams. Bruce has the package as well, so a lot of damage wants to lay down that red carpet for a cinematic cir or circumstances. Been locked in place they here, but I thought so far, forced to Bennett very defensively. That's not ideal, but he has to use it anyway. Here Hope is Entrance one. Kozon out. Yes, sir, and nullifies Hope One, destroys him from the fight. Coyote finds revenge to pull him off, goes on through, and now Coyote jumping forward aggressively, life leeching off the blue buff, and oh. trading his life for Bruce. Barriers burnt, but both members losing their lives in the end, and the fight breaks out. It's a battle of sustain, and a battle Where's of the that? bruises, and it's Tarnex that picks up a triple. Demon! And has the entire map in front of him. It's perfectly winnable. He killer instincts aggressively and just eats a little bit too much damage, goes down, and Flash Wolves lose the team fight at the very last moments as a result. It could have very easily gone their way as Divine lost both their early carries, but it's Len, it's Tarnax, the top side, the bring Divine through that team fight. They're gonna get the Drake, they're gonna get a turret as a result. Let's have another look at this. I want to highlight the brawl that happens up towards the top side of this fight because it's two of the four players that highlight. And Coyote flashes onto Bruce and then he over chases, thinking he needs to force that kill when Bruce is already out of the fight. And that gives Ky uh, Demon an advantage here. He spends Killer Instinct for the shielding, but he's already dead. Uh, Len finishes him off and he goes down because of a tiny bit of over aggression. And it's, it's two cases of it, but it's ultimately fatal. For, for the Flash Wolves, his demon just steps too far forward when he could have played safe and, and won that team fight for them. Now they're behind in this mid game. And it just feels like the war of attrition because the juicy targets are those carries and hence why we saw Akali uh, burst into life and remove the zigzag equation nice and early good. on. But in the end, it just basically became that battle of the bruises because they're tanky, because they're durable. They pump out a lot of damage. I mean, just take a quick stock check of Tarnex's score here. 5011, four items in his inventory. That's scary. Um, I also want to flag here as we go into this mid game, kind of an absence. Len is playing the Olaf. And so often for Divine, we talk about the early game being the Len show. Divine lost this early game, and we didn't see Len gank a lane once. And those mm. are related. We've seen games where Len is quiet previously uh, during the play on the stage, and those were games that Divine lost. So there are a couple of things on the line here. One, d you know, Olaf is a little bit later game of a jungler. Does he just show up here in the late game and it's fine? And if that's the case, that was Divine's plan all along, and they've drafted masterfully to counter with Flash Wolves abroad. But good, the other uh, thing that question, we can... Right? The other thing that we can maybe ask is, as a follow-up question, mm. is... How do you feel about early games where Len's missing? Can they win those, maybe? Is this proof of that? Well, my, my sort of my rebuttal to that is, is uh, we've seen him be so proficient, uh, you know, on the Kha'Zix, the Lee and the Rengar champions that can definitely get the ball rolling nice and early and put the game state in such a place where he can pass the mantle across to somebody else in his team and say, Hope One Coyote, it's your time to shine. But uh, as you constructed, it hasn't been for the sort of same effect. Uh, both these junglers have been pretty quiet in regards, mainly just tracking one another 
uh, and getting a grasp of uh, what the play may be, if it is to be these objectives, or if it is to be these uh, forced hands. But 16 minutes into this one, it's still a very small lead to talk about favoring the Divine Esports squad. Yeah, very small lead. Uh, I do want to talk about Flash Wolves hitting their item spikes, though, because they just have Demon and Bruce are going to do so much damage in this next fight. Um, yeah. They absolutely have to be focused down. Oh, very good dodge oh. for Bruce. Uh, they absolutely have to be focused down, and Bruce has the rapid fire cannon, so we can fight from range. Coyote locked in place right now. The Cataclysm does get dodged, but he goes into the Golden State for a second, jumping away. Ysera one shots and going away from the flank, but a swing of the axe, and Tarnex is now dominating. But those two assassins, those two marksmen, are pumping out damage, and the influence of the Ziggs really isn't giving it any time to shine. It's, it's a very positive trade for Flash Wolves. As for the second team fight in a row, Ysera blows up one of those four priority targets, those four carries in this game at the very beginning of the fight. And it just cancels all of Divine's aggression. They know they can't play in because it's essentially, even though it's a one-for-one -one trade, they only have one carry, uh, Hope one, in comparison to Flash Wolves, who still have Bruce and Demon, and those two carries mean that they will win a front-to-back team fight. That's the strength of this double AD carry composition that Flash Wolves have brought out here. Uh, team Secret in the PPGL also love to run compositions like this, uh, where you can, it's not too dissimilar from like the Sona Seraphine or Sona Lux we see occasionally, uh, where you can just scale into the late game and say, I don't care what you're doing, as long as you take a five on five, we win. And the way to counter that is to avoid getting into five on fives or smash them during the early game. Divine didn't smash them during the early game and they're not doing a good job avoiding five on fives and that makes this very dangerous. Yeah, they find themselves in this very risky lane state here. Coyote jumps on for him, might just Ooh. get destroyed. He does indeed. Demon then Killer Instincts into the river and looks to switch his attention now onto Tarnex, but Tarnex goes huge. He's got the stone plate, but it doesn't matter because Demon's already found that double kill. Now jumping on through as Yashira guarantees that he'll find that triple kill. The killing spree is there. Three members have fallen, and now there's an Ocean Elder on the cards. And that's going to be the game very likely to Flash Wolves off of exactly the timer we set up. The alarm clock's ringing, Skimmy. Demon hit his leg game, and there's the damage. A triple kill for the Flash Wolves AD carry as they swap out locking, bring in Demon, who had so much success at the Summer Super Cup. And here he is delivering in the group stage of the SEA Championship. And it all just started in the mid lane at that very particular turret where Bruce has taken a 2v1, posturing ever so aggressively, staunching them out, allowing the uh, rest of the Flash was to find so much pressure at an angle where Tarnex is saying, I'm flanking, I'm fed, but ultimately is getting baited and left to the Wolves. And now, yeah, Flash Wolves find themselves in this situation where they are uh, very comfortable up by, what, 5k, Elder Ocean and a Baron and a checkmate question mark above their head. Yeah, I, if, if I'm calling it, I would say this is Jack May. Uh, you, can lay, you can lay your king down now, although don't surrender, because we had a team get in trouble for that the other day. <laughs> but you can absolutely start thinking about the next game if you're divine, because Flash Wolves have looked, I think, the best they have all tournament versus you here in this game. The return of Demon to the roster gives them another carry threat, gives them another aggressive damage dealer, allowing, like we saw there in the mid lane, Bruce to step up and take risky fights. And when they go even or bad, you have Demon there as the second Darren. Flash forward, the apprehend, dragging in Bruce. Look to try uh -oh. and get in this to taunt as well. You can't flash, you can't bury. It just does not matter. Coyote hits the culling and switches the focus onto Cookie, but not before Demon, Demon. jumps in aggressively there with the Killer Instinct, pumping out damage to Marksman in the late game stage here. Can literally 1v5. Oh, one more auto. It's going to be enough. It is going to be enough. The Elder buff is too strong. And now Tarnix has to go back to the fan and respond to top and say, what You're on earth happened to my lane? Me. I was 5-0-1 in lane state. Let's and go. now you see it. It's just smashing us all apart. Finds two. The cannons, empowered by the Baron buff, are flooding the base. All the inhibitors are down. The Nexus is soon to follow. And Flash Wolves explode into life in game one. 
And that's what I was talking about. That's what the, the run to complete the match and finally get the win. Honestly, I think Divine Esports, their approach and whatnot is fine. I think the only thing that I would like to see from them going into this game is to change up their picks a little bit. Change up the Darius, change up the Lucian. I feel like these two picks are a little bit of a bait pick. And these were two picks that I wasn't too happy to see from Flash Wolves either. I feel like they're not great champions. They fill very specific niche roles. And Divine were clearly not planning around that. So if they're incapable or unwilling, or I don't know, don't know how to play around these exact factors, then play something more general. Play something that suits your style more. Let Coyote be on an engager. Let Coyote be on an uh, assassin, you know, something that fits in. Let Tarnax be on something that can get into your backline. Not to say that they didn't play these champions well. They did, but I feel like there's just better champions for them. And quick sidetrack, I really like the confidence from Flash Wolves. They were confident to early pick Lulu and say that, you know what, if we Lulu Kaisa, we'll win regardless. And now their confidence locked their bot lane and say, you know, our bot lane is good enough for Kaisa Nami into your Varus plus one, and we will still win. You see, but the issue here with Flash Wolves' composition is they're showing their hands so early on. This is very reminiscent to a Yasuo composition. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to flex and bait the idea from Divine Esports and trying to get them to play against that and then try and switch out. And if they don't respect it, then they will go for the Yasuo. The issue is, I think that the Yasuo composition is one of their lower tier prio kind of picks. Divine Esports, I think they are doing a very good job responding to it. Just have a lot of pickoff and have a lot of strong assassins, duelists in the sidelines where they cannot enable Yasuo. I yeah, like this yes. Kha'Zix um, I like this Kha'Zix. The Kha'Zix is a pretty good pick here. It's good to look for isolations in the side lane, right? And that's why Gavin isn't talking about if Yasuo ever goes to the side lane, he won't have a problem going up against Kha'Zix uh, and Galio. The good thing is though, he never has to. Their team comp is very capable of forcing 5 fives. You get the Vi ultimate coming in, you get mm. Raga's cast into Yasuo ultimate setup. That's a great combo here for Flash Wolves. Go and Skibby! Group B is well and truly rolling and Flash Wolves have just demonstrated that they're in with a word against one of the best teams in Southeast Asia against Divine out of this incredibly strong Vietnam region. I, I am stoked as we get into game number two, and that's how you know I'm Californian. <laughs> Absolutely, we got those regional accents uh, kicking in. You know, opposites collide, a big ocean dividing us two as I'm down under, uh, you know, living in a different time zone, but we're still getting ourselves nice and excited for this game here. Hey, worth noting also, uh, Divine Esports on their side, they got some comfort picks too. Len is back in that Kha'Zix, love to see it, and Coyote, kind of like we thought we'd see in game one, He's going to be that huge mid-game influence or the mid-lane influence more than anything as the Galio. And I want to keep an eye... Oh my lord, Coyote dropped very low. I want to keep an eye on Len as he does clear out through that first jungle path because what he is doing very much determined the pace of game number one. Len was not able to gank lanes early and we saw Divine just crumble in a way they don't usually during the early game. Now here in game two, he's already showing up in line. 2v2 breaks out here in mid lane. Lin has to reveal himself. Didn't want to, but had to in the end because it looks like uh, the Flash Wolves really want to force this wave in, make it crash, force the reset, play for the double crab, and uh, and get all the vision in the world. But it will be that gentleman's handshake. They are just going to go for the cross map plays. Oh, Lin picks up lane. this one. Oh, one. Burns a, a summon a heal. And it's just going to get zoned away from such a big wave under this turret. Yeah, so what's happening right now with Flash Wolves killing this wave before it hits the turret is that the turret itself is killing all of the blue side minions. So Hope One has no access to them. He's losing a whole bunch of gold, a whole bunch of XP. Look at this though from Flash Wolves in such a point of power. We're rotating from zoning away the bot lane to then saying that Galio, you can't respond. Now what can Divine do here? Okay, Bruce has gone for the uh, the trade to try and prevent the blue buff from being burning. stolen away. Is He's the bleed dead. enough? It is. The bleed is just so insane. And Len is still surviving. The void spikes go out and the heal comes across. And what looks so good for Flash Wolves, Divine Esports punish with conviction. Welcome to the early game. Len shows up aggressively, starts pressing across the map, building opportunities as Flash Wolves have to respond to him. And that's always where Divine's early game power comes from. It's not so much that Len is finding the kills, it's that because Len is invading, Flash Wolves have to choose. Either we let him steal away our entire jungle, or we go into a very awkward position without proper warding to stop him from doing that.
Oh, that's beautiful there from the uh, the duo of Divine Esports. Oh, oh no, hang on a minute. Does this mean that Tonic's gonna fall on down? He is! He's so lucky! Oh, oh, the turret shots. Far too many turret shots. Yes, Sarah! So clean with the explosive cask. And yes, Sarah's back as well. The Flash Wolves had a really hard play on the stage where they did not look like the team we expected. And Yasara was a huge part of that. He had so much gold dumped into his lane. They were trying to play to his top side. And unless he was on Renekton, he just didn't have good games. Here, he's playing Gragas, one of the only champions he looked decent on during the play and stage. And he's able to, on the weak side, without resources being thrown that way by the Flash Wolves, he's able to 1v2 and bring this game back within arm's reach during this early game. You know what excites me the most, TJ, is this itemization. It's not going to be the tank. Greg oh, is yeah. in that same regard. It's not going to be that Sunfire Cape. It ain't going to be the full now. No, the Rod of Ages. I'm taking that skill check. I'm running the AP. It's going to be It's going to be explosive. I mean, it's, it's in the name. Explosive Cask. He's going to run it back time and time again. And you can keep an eye on what Len's up to after that early game, because we do have the... Drake up right now, and Divine are not positioning to fight him. They don't have the resources to. Len taking taking a little bit longer to path down towards there. The rest of Divine just now heading that way. They want this first Drake. It's an infernal. Both teams have to fight over it, but they were not in position to set up vision, which means this skirmish around the Rift Scuttler, this skirmish to get wards into this river matters so much. And just look how early, TJ, they've actually done the lane swap for Flash Wolves. They've planted their bot lane straight away in mid and said, we're guaranteeing tempo, we're guaranteeing split push uh, is available nice and early. Now you've got Yasuo in a 1v1 up against uh, Hope One's uh, virus. And you're saying, that's volatile. That could certainly be a solo kill found in a moment of mere minutes. But, funny sports star, so still going to pull them away. away and get the first turret or the first Drake of the game. So what they were setting up for is the core conceit of this composition. This is a Bruce Carrig comp, which is what Flash Wolves love to run. And the game plan is... The game plan is, we see a team fight break out apparently. The tidal wave knocks off three members to bubble afterwards. Ah, oh, it's not enough. Ooh. It's not enough. You can't stop the pain when Tarnix drops the axe and smacks you down with the guillotine. Now, can Cookie do anything about this? No. Assault and battery. It wouldn't achieve anything. And we, uh, we just walk away. All right. Well, to finish my sentence, the game plan is you throw out a tidal wave or an explosive cask, uh, you get a ton of knockups, and then Bruce swats them all down with the Ars Uh Because the Ars can trigger on anyone getting knocked up, and tidal wave and explosive cask both count as knockups. So it's a really scary combination in five on five team fights, but it's vulnerable to exactly what Divine are doing so far, exactly what they were doing there in the mid lane, which is picking apart this composition and grabbing individual parts of it whilst they're not together, whilst they're not alongside Bruce. You can see Bruce was down on the bottom side of the map all alone. They didn't cluster and challenge Bruce under turret, because if you do that, the rest of Flash Wolves can collapse on you, and then you're fighting the five on five where that combo's online. No, instead, you dive the mid lane. You shut down Demon early, preventing his late game scaling, and most importantly, avoiding the potential of that combo. It's worth noting, obviously, as you touch on uh, Demon and his itemization, that he has gone for the critical strike compared to Hope One here on the Lethality oh, with that tier. But that's not important right now because the fight's about to break out. Kuki on the widest flank, so wide that he falls on down. The angle not cute enough, and he's just going to die in that situation. The exhaust onto Bruce, the pounce upon it from Len, and a double kill was found here by the Karzix. One by one, they crumble. The isolation is there. And now Len is hiding in the shadows, just running past this Walk bush, wide. back to the safety of his team. And they'll be content with a two for one. Yeah, very good trade for Divine. They they kind of catch Cookie and Bruce with their trousers around their ankles as they both seem to be entirely convinced it was only going to be Coyote in lane. You can see Bruce taking that, like you talked about, like really weird wide flank angle. He's just walking through bushes, seeing what's going to happen. And as he face checks the bush, surprise, surprise, Divine know this gank is coming. They just saw Bruce blow his ultimate in a one-on-one. -on -one. There's no way you do that if you're not sure you can find the kill afterwards. So Divine rotate down to match that, and it feels like Flash Wolves kind of disrespect them. They, they don't anticipate that kind of map awareness from an opponent. And Divine call them on it. They have the resources in place to defend their, their mid laner down there in the bottom lane. And because Bruce has already spent his ultimate, the tidal wave doesn't get any follow up. And they just slowly lose the trade. Certainly is an ideal. 
Uh, but we do know what their win condition is, and they can run it back time and time again until it reaches the point of power where everybody is far too durable for those resets to even be considered. Yeah. Now, I suppose we're looking at Divine Esports here, saying we've got ourselves a very small gold lead. We've got tempo, but let's run it back with this play, because, I mean, this is why I'm getting critical. The fact that the Viking has run like that and say, here I am, come get me. Oh, wait, I'm dead. Well, I mean, it's a great play if there's nobody down here, right? <laughs> if there's nobody down in the bottom lane, it's a great play. But unfortunately, Divine are a real smart team during the live up. Oh, that's a nice double knock up there. Then the quickness afterwards. The Herald has been summoned, so Divine Esports are answering back with a trade that will net them a kill. So they're going to so, get Bruce. Uh, their mid tier one survives, but it has been crippled. Yeah, this is a really good play actually by Divine. If they're looking for more, Tarnax roaming around the side here, but they catch Bruce out all alone in the bottom lane and they just assassinate him. Good flash away there from Eason, was to be caught. But they've uh, forced him away. Guaranteed another turret is found. Yeah. And Divine Esports have got two. Really well played by Divine. Again, isolating Bruce, not fighting him with the team. And the second Bruce is dead, it's really easy to fight the rest of the team. And this is going to have really dire consequences because I don't know if Bruce has enough damage to fulfill the carry role he needs to anymore. That goes a spooky ghost. Divine looking to try and mount their assault to contest. There we the go. Second dragon of the game. Flash will still looking for their first. The Guillotine is looking to try and come on out, waiting for those max stacks on the bleeds to come on through. But then the peels away. Three members locked in that bot tri bush. Bruce on his own gets knocked up once. The arrow comes out. The damage is there. Is the bleed enough? It's not. Bruce has survived, but he's zoned he away. So it's essentially still the 4v5. It's Yasera of all the health in the world. But what can Agragas do when he's got no follow-up? Well, he chucks it out anyway, but he's going to fall on down as Nami dies. And Kuki is gone. Assault and battery. He's assaulted himself because he can't do much. Down for 20 seconds. Divine are healthy, and they'll get the second Drake as well. And disrespect after disrespect from Flash Wolves. Bruce trying to stay in that pit for such a long time, not using his Flash or, or, around the outside. Uh, he shouldn't have even been in that pit in the first place. Then Flash Wolves stay in a fight they've clearly lost rather than lick their wounds, retreat and play defense, which is what they're going to have to do. And Divine just benefit from those mistakes time and time again as they are a darn good team. And they're going to play aggressive into anyone that's handing them free wins like that. Yeah, they're just thriving in the chaos and uh, able to zone away so many members at the very get-go. What are you doing? Bruce into a position like this. And we what start to this? sit back and wonder, what on earth was that? Divine Esports are capitalizing beautifully. Yeah, Divine are going through the motions. They're just executing the game plan. And Flash Wolves keep tossing money inside the collection jar as I, I don't know what Bruce is doing there. He clearly sees there's at least three people attacking that top turret. And he, he does have the rotate up from Ye Eason. He does have that tidal wave coming in, but he's not in a position to 1v3, even with the tidal wave back up. Oh, nice chain of corruption there. Max stacks, Shouldn't max range. He's never locked in place. Forced to flash away. Has he baited the rest of his team over to a false sense of security? He has. Unfortunately for them, Demon has died. He's paid the ultimate price. The rest of the team comes spawning on through. But every single time they're taking these trades, it's always a 4v5 is the aftermath. Yeah, it's a 4v5. You're down in gold. You don't have your key carry, Bruce. The combo with Bruce is kind of the only way they conceivably win a team fight now. I, and it, it is incredibly questionable that Flash Wolves force into Divine. Divine play that really well. They start the Baron, they attract Flash Wolves' attention, and then they play the choke point, rely on Coyote's AoE, and because you have such a good AoE taunt from that frontline Gallia, you can position Hope One behind the Gallia, behind the Rakan, and he just throws out arrows. He's got a free firing range, he can just dump damage in, and this slightly more defensive build from Coyote, the, the advantage of having such a good Rakan and Quay really adds up. So much CC to juggle, to overlap and put in combo, making it very difficult for Flash Wolves to execute the comp in the fashion they want to do. The Baron is there, it's been up for two minutes, and Flash Wolves are not even making a move for it. They have no vision, they don't want to go for that fight, they're down by 7k. And now the question is for Divine Esports, how much can they achieve with this? Because they've broken every single tier one, Flash Wolves are yet to find their own turret, and you're looking to say, we're marching down a lane, we're grabbing ourselves an early in here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm looking at how long it's taking Bruce to kill these minions. I was trying to gauge how many items he was on. And the answer is, we do get the answer. It is two items. It's not enough. 
Uh, he, he can't match the defense that's available for key members over on Divine. Uh, Tarnax with the Dead Man's Plate in particular is just going to laugh at any amount of damage he throws out. This is this is really hard for Flash Wolves. I think this is going to be a tie game, a draw result, as they look very good in game one and then completely collapse in game number two, not understanding their win conditions, disrespecting Divine's ability to rotate across the map and Divine's ability to team fight. Have you heard, TJ, of the 010 power spike guest wave? It's not happening, mate. He's too far behind. <laughs> if, they, if they can extend this game to like 20 minutes, maybe. But Bruce is dead again because he's charging down a lane while his teammates are on the other side of the map. So Five more to go. We'll count that as a win if you're a fan <laughs> of Yasuo. You've seen it in your solo queue games. And he's running it down here today. Unfortunately for them, they've lost one in him. They're going to lose the second. And now they've got a third in their sights. Thriving in the chaos. One by one, they fall to scurrying away bubbles. to the hills like ants. It just does not matter. What's Len is in a point of power right do? now. He's just leapfrogging in. He's having fun. Bit of sombrero, chucking it out there, having a bit of a dance in the sun and living his best life now as 12 kills to three and a 12k gold lead. Yeah, this is my Ozan Yasuo from my solo queue game. <laughs> <laughs> this, is really, this is a really rough performance from Bruce, who's one of the best players, one of the best mid laners in this tournament. But he fell behind early, and, and the reason why there's O10 Yasuos is because he's such an aggressive character, your only way to possibly get back into this game is to play very aggressive into your opponents. Uh, but that's just not happening, so Bruce, it, it keeps getting worse. And one of the reasons for it, I want to I pay attention to this, Coyote has actually built a really cool build with Crystalline Reflector as his second item, which gives him a little more, more defense against exactly the kind of burst engage that a Yasuo wants to do. Crystalline Reflector, of course, a Wild Rift specific item that gives you uh, basically stacks of shield. So he does, and shooting is what they need to try and mitigate all the burst that comes wow. their way. Tarnix with a d disgusting rip back on free. So much so that it's actually juking my own mouth as to what I can even represent and say about it. It was beautiful, and it is downright dirty because they found two. They're going to find a third. The Nexus is in their sight, but they want an ace, TJ. Why would they not? Reset after reset. If it ain't the Karzix, it's then going to be the Darius soon to follow. We will get that tie. It will be the perfect 1-1. And it didn't have any minions, so I was very scared for a moment, but that's exactly what you get. And a hell of a welcome to Group B. It is the Group of Death.